Thanks for staying with us now as coalition talks are underway. The Center for Development and Enterprise is calling on political decision makers to put the country ahead of narrow interests. Now this as, for example, the province of Gozul Natal is the focus of many to see who will form a government there. At the same time, there is no outright winner in the national election, which means there must be an arrangement in place to govern. So Center for Development and Enterprise Executive Director Anne Bernstein joins us live now. And thank you so much for your time this evening. What does putting the country ahead of narrow interests look like? Well, two things. We're saying that in the negotiations to form new governments in provinces and at national level, it's not just about positions and power and politics. It's also about priorities. It's about policy. What is the new government going to do? We're a country in crisis. So we're, we're pushing very hard to say, you need to bear this in mind and you need to agree plans of action because we need urgent responses to the many challenges that we have. So that's our big thrust. We've been working for the last six months in collaboration with many experts around the country, business leaders and former civil servants and others to develop to answer a big question, which mm -hmm. is what should the new government do first yeah. in order to turn South Africa around and in a more prosperous direction? And I'm going to get to those priorities in just a moment, but I want to stay with something you said, because you say that it's about the policies, it's about putting the country first. But going into some of these talks, we've heard some of the party leaders, for example, demanding positions already. And I wonder how much of a complication is this as well for what is taking place behind the scenes? Look, we're in a very dangerous moment for the country, but also one with hope. If we can get people, politicians who are committed to the Constitution, to peaceful political action, the rule of law, and deepening economic reforms, it's possible to build a political center in South Africa that can take the country forward. So we're really talking to those politicians to say, don't forget you have a country in crisis that you must fix. And that's what should be guiding your discussions as much as anything else. So let me then, um, you know, stay with that point because one of the priorities is fix the state. And you were saying here, reorganize the cabinet as well as the presidency. How do they begin to do that? Well, we'll be releasing a document next week which details the recommendations we're making on how to reduce the size of our cabinet. And we're calling on the politicians and the new president, whoever that might be, to not resort to patronage in our cabinet. We need to center the cabinet around priority issues for action and get expertise as much as we can into the cabinet. We also need to reorganize the presidency. The week after next, we're coming with a document that will talk about what we're calling mission critical jobs. These are the senior positions in the civil service that have to be have to be occupied by the best possible people in the country. So from DGs to the teams they build around them, we need to make sure we have people who can execute, who can implement the new cabinet and president's priorities so that South Africans can start to see the difference. We've got to govern the country differently if we're to get out of trouble. And I suppose, you know, coupled with that will also be um, accountability in that particular regard as well, because we also saw at some point the performance appraisal, for example, of these ministers being made public, but at the same time, when we then are being told they're being assessed, but we're not seeing those assessments being made public. So how then do we begin to hold those who are in cabinet to account if we can't see what they're, you know, being scored? Well, I think the election result held the cabinet to account. They got a big fright. So that's one way. Parliament needs to be empowered more mm. to hold the executive to account. But at this point, we're talking about forming a new government, hopefully. Yeah. And so we're saying pick people who can do the job, not just because of party loyalty, but put the national interest ahead 
of party interest. The country is in deep trouble, and we need an executive that can actually implement in the best interests of all the people. And at the same time, I mean, just yesterday, we're getting that uh, GDP data, for example, and some of the economists saying that this also spells, um, you know, what they need to be doing behind closed doors in order to make sure that they help the economy grow as well. How critical of a point is that? Absolutely vital. We have one of the world's worst unemployment crises, and that's part mainly because we're not seeing growth. We have to put growth as a top priority for the new government. And everything has to be judged against that. We won't get growth with a failing state. So that's why we're saying we've got to fix the state. We're choosing two things to do there. We're also saying we've got to free up markets and firms and competition so that we can get the maximum returns. What? What? What underlies everything we're saying is that if we can get states and markets working well together, we can perform miracles in South Africa. It's been done in other countries where hundreds of millions of people have been brought out of poverty through economic reforms that have allowed markets to play a much bigger role. And we're saying that's what we need to do in South Africa. A weak state cannot drive development. We've got to allow other players to do as much as they can, and we've got to free them up from over-regulation and from a whole lot of attitudes that assume the private sector wants to exploit everyone, when in fact we can have regulations that make them compete with each other and the, the, the rest of the country can benefit. And this is the only way we can get more and more jobs. And, and it segues into, you know, the next priority point, which I also believe is quite critical, and that is mass inclusion. You talk about the issues of transformation and how that also needs to be reimagined. Absolutely. Do we really want to be a country that boasts about expanding millions of people who are dependent on the state? I don't think that's what we want to be. We have to help people now, of course, but we have to admit that our approach to dealing with poverty has failed in South Africa. Six out of 10 people live in poverty. So we're saying we need a whole different approach. And this has to be one of bringing millions of people out of poverty and not elite enrichment. And we have a number of practical proposals to deal with that. We don't think inclusion is an afterthought that we think about tomorrow. Inclusion has to be in fixing the state. We will get better services to everybody, and the poor will benefit the most from better public transport, better schooling, better health care. Also, if we get faster growth and we make it job rich, poorer people can get into jobs that they've never had before. In addition, we are looking at how we incentivize employment, not job opportunities, but employment in the real economy. And we also will have a proposal on how to promote a much better way, we think, to promote black entrepreneurship. Uh, we have this in the state. We spend billions in department after department at the moment, every single year, but we're not getting anywhere. We're saying this is a difficult task. Let's give it to the private sector who actually know how to support entrepreneurs and to make them prosper and from move from small firms to bigger firms. All right, and thank you so much. Looking forward to those installments uh, to see then what happens and also to see um, that you know what the talks that are taking place behind closed doors then will do and culminate um, into what government for South Africa, as you say, that it's time now to put the country first. But thank you so much. Do appreciate your time. That is Center for Development and Enterprise Executive.